now using your webcam or 3G phone. To get in touch, email news at sky.com or text 84501. War, divorce, immigration, royalty. With news stories like that today, no wonder Sky News' inbox is full of your comments. We'll hear some of those later on. Do keep them coming in, though, please. News at sky.com is the address to use, and you can text us too on 84501. In a moment, we'll ask if the internet should be subject to stricter controls. But uh, get in touch too about Prince Charles's tax situation, all those new immigration curbs from the new EU member states. Now, more than 30,000 websites containing indecent images of children have been removed from the Internet over the past 10 years. That's according to the latest figures released today by the Internet Watch Foundation, or IWF. Over the past decade, the IWF has received more than 120,000 reports of illegal content from around the world. That's an average of 1,000 a month. So far this year, IWF has received more than 27,000 reports. That's compared to just 615 in its first year. A staggering 85% of reports relate to suspected child abuse websites. With those figures in mind, is policing the internet the answer to eliminating child pornography and other offensive websites? Or is it wrong to threaten the freedom of the web? With me is Wendy Grossman, a technology journalist and author, and John Carr from the children's charity NCH. Both, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Um, Wendy, first of all, could we be doing more? Um, the, the problem with the internet is you can never remove everything that people object to, and every country has different standards, although I think child pornography is probably one that most countries are agreed on. So, so the thing we used to worry about was that we would end up with a kind of lowest common denominator thing where everything that could offend it pot anybody would be removed and then you would have practically nothing left. Um, that hasn't happened. Um, there is a famous saying, the internet perceives censorship as damage and roots around it. You're never going to be able to take everything off that is offensive I think I think it's it, why not though? Why, why can't you well technically because technically because um, there are so many ways to do things anonymously there are so many ways to find a country where the content you want to put up online is legal um, as long Even as when it comes to the issue of child pornography I mean I know there are different ages of consent around the world but I mean th there must be an agreed level at which a child can't give consent and therefore it is child pornography and shouldn't be allowed. Um, John would know more precisely John. than I do, but I don't think there is actually, a, a, there's no international treaty that says this is going to be the definition as far as I know. Well, the, the, there is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, which declares anybody under the age of 18 as being uh, in need of protection from the state, and they define the types of protection that children deserve and ought to get as including being exploited through indecent images, through child pornography. So, so there is an international standard, and most countries in the world observe the standard in theory, but sadly, as the IWF figures uh, are demonstrating all too clearly today, in practice, most of them don't do anything like enough to combat it. You know, the other point I'd like to make about those figures is they sound really staggering when you say 30,000 websites. But remember, there are hundreds of millions of websites. In, in terms of percentages, it's really very small. What struck me, though, when I was doing some research on this, I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I understand mm. that an awful lot of uh, these dodgy websites are, are hosted in the US. We're not talking about a country which is, is not a developed country where it's more difficult, perhaps, to police these things. Ninety percent of spam comes from the US, too. But you would have thought that America, yeah. having the, the criminal justice system that it has, having the kind of intolerance one would have thought to child abuse, that it would be easy to clamp down in that country. There is intolerance to child abuse. Everybody is against child abuse. Not everybody sees child pornography as child child abuse. But the American authorities do, don't they, John? The American authorities do, certainly. 70% Seven, of all of the illegal images, all of the child pornography that's been reported here in Britain comes from two countries, America and, and Russia. America has been the biggest single, single publisher since records began. Now, uh, the good news is that the Americans are finally, and in a very welcome way, beginning to attack the problem in the same way that the British are doing. The British have got a tremendous reputation around the world for the serious way in which they've tackled child pornography. The Americans announced on the 27th September in Congress that they're going to copy the same methods as the Brits. John, you said finally, inferring mm. that they'd dragged their feet and, and, and hadn't well, been as quick as they, they could have been. Why was that? 
It's hard to. Uh, it's partly complicated by the First Amendment issue. Uh, in America, the First Amendment is regarded as sacrosanct, Which free, speech, free speech, free First, speech, freedom and so, of speech of assembly, of religion, of the press. So every time the government mm. or, or an individual state has attempted to make a move, they've ended up in court. <laughs> Grown people should be able to make a, an easy distinction between child pornography. And freedom of speech. I really? mean, they're, they're, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I accept. Are, with you, your, are you absolutely certain you would know child pornography when you saw it? Well, I, having never seen any, no. But I, but I would. I'm sure that there would be some images which I, which, which, we could all agree. There on. There are some images on which you can agree. But the thing is, under the First Amendment, it's considered you can't, as as a court, you can't go and and say to somebody, you cannot put this, you cannot publish this material. That's called prior restraint, and it's very much against the Constitution. Um, so you would ha you have to have a situation where something is put up and then somebody sees it and then somebody wants it taken down, which is exactly you, you the system you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's the way it's been. But the good news is, as I said, on the 27th September on Capitol Hill, the, the American agency, which is the sister body of the IWF, it's called the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, announced that they were going to copy the IWF system. Now, what that means is that they're going to actively intervene to block access to all known child pornography websites. Good idea. Uh, I'd like to see the details of how they're going to do it. I mean, one, one of the things that we've been concerned about with the IWF since the beginning is it's one thing to say we are going to block this illegal material that is against the law according to the laws of Britain. And it's quite another to say let's block a bunch of things that might or might not be illegal. Now, so far, the IWF has been pretty responsible about that. Um, uh, hang on. Completely responsible. In yeah. 10 years, there has not been a single challenge to any decision that the IWF has made. The only reason made. I said pretty responsible mm. was that there was a, there was a, an incident a few years ago when they started talking about kind of expanding the remit. Yes. And they, didn't, they didn't do it. <laughs> they didn't do it. But no. there was this kind of, gee, we could yeah. tackle hate speech. What's and we could tackle these yeah, other yeah, things that aren't true. necessarily yeah. illegal. What strikes me as interesting is that uh, I think when Google went big into China, they sort of signed up and said, you know, we won't allow you to go to the pro-democracy groups and all this kind of thing. Uh, and if Google can come to that agreement with the Chinese government, yes. surely uh, they and other search engines and the people but that facilitate people arriving at these websites could be a bit more proactive you can, in terms you of can stopping slow people down. You can slow people down and you can make it harder for them. But a friend of mine and I were just talking about this. He was in China. He went to use Google and found a blank page. And the next, and five, two minutes later, he had set up a virtual net, private network connection to a server at home where he could see the news he wanted. There is always a way to bypass these things. Yeah. It's really a question of cutting down on it. You can't really eliminate it entirely. That may be true, but an awful lot of cutting down is what we need. It's true that friends like yours and possibly even I could, because of my technical knowledge, find a way around most technical obstacles that would be put in our way. But 98% of the human race can't. And if we can deal with that large volume, I think it's worth doing, even if it's not perfect, even if it's not 100%. Wendy, John. Thank you both very much for coming and uh, sharing your views. Uh, much appreciated. We uh, must move on. Lots of extra features on the Sky News website, including this one about the strange future.